Yeah, we have a laptop. Yes, really, really large laptop. But it is a laptop that you can carry around if you're really strong. A lot bigger, a lot heavier than say a modern laptop like this. This is a Windows 10 laptop. You can see it's very thin, very modern. Here is a 1980s laptop. This is an Amstrad laptop, 386, really, really old. But the reason I'm showing you this laptop is that this laptop allows you to insert a network card. This is typically a network card that you would install in a PC. This one is a 3Com Etherlink 3 PCI card, supports RJ45, supports 10 base 5, supports 10 base 2. The one in this laptop is an Intel card. So this is an Intel 816 LAN adapter. This is using ISA. So it's an ISA connector rather than PCI. But what it does support is 10 base 5 and 10 base 2. So I have inserted the card in the laptop. And what that allows me to do is to take a drop cable like this and I can connect the drop cable to the laptop. These cables are very difficult to work with, but I can connect the cable and then clip it onto the laptop. So that cable is now clipped so that it doesn't come out. This drop cable is then used to connect to a transceiver like this. This transceiver allows me to connect the laptop to a 10 base 5 network. So this is known as an intrusive transceiver. It's not using a vampire tap. This is an intrusive transceiver. Here I've got a 10 base 5 terminator. So I've connected the 10 base 5 terminator directly to the transceiver. You wouldn't typically do that. Normally you'd have this connect to a cable, but I've only got a very small 10 base 5 network running in my room here. I've demonstrated this in other videos, but I've got two Windows 98 computers at the back there connected to a 10 base 5 network. And this is the cable that those two PCs are connected to. Once again, very difficult to work with this cable. Very thick, very difficult. But what I'll do actually is turn this around. You, see, you can see now how the laptop is connected to the network. So do that. And then what I can do now is connect this to the transceiver. So I'm connecting the 10 base 5 cable directly to the transceiver. Not easy once again to work with. So put that on my desk. Problem is this needs a connector actually, otherwise it comes out as well. So I'll put this underneath here. Connect that like that. Not easy to work with this stuff. That's why we moved to 10 base 2. Again, if you haven't seen this before, this is 10 base 2 thin net. Much easier to work with this cable than this really thick, difficult to work with 10 base 5 cabling. But that's an example of a laptop connected to 10 base 5. Well, it was connected to 10 base 5 until it clipped out. Here's a English kettle lead. So this allows me to connect to this Amstrad computer from the 1980s. Amstrad is a brand here in the UK. Lord Sugar was the person who started this when he was young. He's famous now for doing The Apprentice in the UK, amongst other things. But this is an example of one of his early computers when he had that company. So here's my Amstrad. I'll connect the transceiver once again. Hopefully it'll stay connected. And then what I can do now is start up this computer. What I'll do while this boots up is start up my network devices. I've got some routers here. So I'll start the routers up. I'll speed the video up at this point because this will take a while to boot. But basically this laptop is connected to 10 base 5 now using this connection. 
connected to those Windows computers over there, which I'll start up as well. You can see here it's starting MS-DOS. Hopefully you can see that okay. So I'll start Windows. This is Windows 3.11. So Windows for work groups. Obviously it's really slow. 386 computer, Windows 3.11. If you think devices are slow today, here's an example of a very old laptop booting up and taking its time to boot up. Okay, so Windows 3.11. I'll put my password in, press enter. Windows is starting. Now I don't have a mouse connected to this at the moment, but I can use my keyboard to jump from one item to another. You can also use Windows shortcuts. So Alt W allows me to select a different window as an example. I can see as an example that I've got Microsoft TCP IP32 installed, but I'll go back to main and start an MS-DOS prompt. So this is a DOS prompt running within Windows. And we told that we can type exit to go back to Windows. But what I want to show you here is that I can ping google.com. Hopefully that'll work. And there you go. I can ping google.com from a Windows 3.11 laptop connected to a 10 base 5 network. That's connected to this Cisco router. Here's the other end of the 10 base 5 network. What I've done here actually is connect the orange cable to the yellow cable. So this is the connection from orange to yellow using another transceiver. So inline transceiver. This is the end of the cable, connects via a drop cable to the Cisco router, which is connected to another Cisco router using 10 base 2, which is then connected to a Cisco switch using UTP, and that connects me onto the internet. Ping is basically sending a message saying, hello, are you there? And then the server's replying back, yes, I'm here. And the PC is saying, hello, are you there? And the server replies back, yes, I'm here. So basically, it sends a, the PC sends a message to the server saying, please reply if you're there. And the server replies back saying, yes, I'm here. And it's used just to verify that the server is up. Is it there? Is it working? Is it turned on? So as an example, I'll ping cisco.com another website and that works but if I disconnect this cable the ping times out so again ping google.com that's no longer resolving because we can't get to the internet DNS is not working I have to connect this back in again to get it to work now I don't know how well that's going to work but there you go. It's eventually resolved it actually. So we can now ping google.com. Up key doesn't work. Control P doesn't work here. So I've got to type it again. So ping google.com. If I remove this terminator, it'll actually break the network. So you can see that last request timed out. So ping google.com once again that doesn't work because if you take the terminator out on either side of the bus network it destroys the network you've got to have terminators on both sides and now you can see it's working we're getting this says receive this is powered not sure if you can see all of that we are now sending and receiving traffic so ping google.com once again take the terminator off and that will break the network so that was too quick for me so ping google.com if you remove this you get collisions so i'm not sure if you can see that light but we can see there's a collisions there try and bring this a bit closer collisions are taking place on the network so network doesn't work it's broken because of all the collisions taking place Basically, what happens is if you remove the terminator, the signal is bouncing back and forth across the network, causing all kinds of collisions, breaks your 10 base 5 network. Same applies in 10 base 2. Hopefully, now that the terminator is back, things will settle down 
and the network will start working again. We can see that there are no collisions at the moment. We're starting to receive traffic. Okay, we got a bad IP address there, it took too long. Let's try again, ping google.com. And there you go, that's working okay. So this is an example of a old laptop with a 10 base 5 network interface card in it. So again, this is obviously not recommended to do this while it's running, but there is my 10 base 5 network card connected via AUI to 10 base 5 well, to a 10 base 5 network if that actually allows me to keep it connected and I can connect to the internet. So try that again. Very difficult cabling this. I'll lift the screen again. Ping google.com and hopefully that'll work and there you go. Old laptop with a network interface card installed in it. This is an Intel network card. I'm running Windows 3.11 here, so if I type exit, try that again, exit. You'll see that this will take me back to Windows. So I'm running Windows for work groups here. Alt F as an example would allow me to exit Windows, do various other things, but I could as an example Go to Microsoft TCP IP32. That shows you that I could telnet to a device. So I'm gonna telnet to my Cisco router. That allows me to remotely manage that router. It's actually saved the previous session. So my router has an IP address of 10.1.1.254. That's the router running 10 base five over here, this router at the bottom with this AUI cable. So back on the PC, I'll press enter now and I can log in using my password of Cisco. Show version shows me the version of operating system. This is a 2500 series router. It's been up for 10 minutes. Version of software running here is 11.0. And on the router, as an example, I could ping google.com that works because the PC is actually sending the traffic through this router. So that's its default gateway. You can exit out of there. Connection is lost. So Alt C, I'll exit out of Telnet. Alt W to go to window. Let's go to network, network setup. Now, typically you'd use a mouse here, but again, I haven't got a mouse connected. So I'll just go to networks. We can see that we've installed the Microsoft Windows network. Exit out of that. I'll go to drivers. And as you can see here, we've got my Intel Ether Express 16 or 16 TP network adapter. I'll go to Microsoft TCP. And then I'll go to setup to set this up. You can see the IP address of the laptop. You can see the subnet mask. Notice default gateway. An important piece is to go to DNS. And notice I've said Google as the DNS server on this PC or laptop. And I'll exit out of there. So just to make the point once again, go to window. I'll go to main. Open up an MS DOS prompt. One last test and I'll be able to ping google.com. Okay, so there's an example of retro networking with a 1980s laptop using 10 base 5. I can connect to the internet with this laptop going across a 10 base 5 network or thick net network. If you haven't seen the cables before, this is an example of thick net, really thick cabling. This is really thick compared to thin net or 10 base 2 so notice the difference in cable size that's massive compared to this thin cabling and that's once again very thick compared to utp this is an example of cat5 utp cabling much easier to work with this cabling than this really thick cabling 
Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications. I plan to create a whole bunch of a retro networking videos. Let me know if you enjoy these types of videos. I'm David Bombal. I want to wish you all the very best.